me tell you something. Miriam might need you for the dope, and it's obvious why Charles keeps you around, but I don't need you for anything. So don't expect me to be as patient as the people who are using you. Is this the part where I tremble? You know, Charles, uh, Charles needed me one time, too. And uh, he made me a lot of promises. Yes, I heard all about that. And then you choked in the clutch, right? Hey, I didn't choke. I was being set up to take the blame for him. I went to jail with dear old Chucky refusing to accept my calls. I faced felony charges. <laughs> you know, I don't think I have to worry about you at all. Anyone who uh, gets tied up with Carpenter pays for it sooner or later. <laughs> I just hope I can be around to watch. So there's no record of the divorce? Action is filed and later withdrawn. Okay. Well, listen, I... Hey, listen, thank you, buddy. I gotta go now. I owe you one. Bye. Don't tell me. Your little shoe just landed right on Park Place. Don't get cute, Webster. I want help with my house. Well, you're nine weeks and one court order too late. Goodbye. I'm paying you as my lawyer. I expect illegal assistance. Nancy, the only payment I ever got from you was one of your deceased mother's rings. A diamond which ring. Which was never legally yours. Besides, the balance from that ring dried up weeks ago. All the time, frustration, research I did for you. Research? Why didn't you research that there weren't four copies of the will? Oh, right. Yeah, that's the thing. If I had to do it all over again, first thing I'd do would be go right straight to your sister. Uh, excuse me, Miss Davidson, but I'm working on a little fake will for your sister. Now, are you sure there aren't any more of the real ones left? Look, let's not hash out past history. What are we going to do? Oh, I struck we from our vocabulary last time we met. You haven't been answering my phone calls or anything. Oh, you miss me. I'm touched. Hey, look it, I want some action. Oh, doesn't Charles take care of that? Shut up. <sighs> I deserve that. Forever getting involved with a with an ill-mannered, self-obsessed, attention-craving little brat. Well, now that our accounts are settled, I think I'll just have my secretary write you out a receipt and bid you farewell. If I lose this house, so help me, you'll pay, Webster. Oh, yes, the Lawson Bordello. Well, look, why don't you just hike your rates with Charles and buy it from Terry? for me to answer the door. Sometimes you can't make it to the door. Don't be droll. These are for you. Yeah, I guess I could have figured that part out. <clears throat> this is very nice, Norman. I know just the place for these. So how are you feeling? I feel fine. You look a little better. That's real comforting. I mean, since the last time I saw you, when Nancy was here. Yeah, well, that was a long time ago. Two days ago. It was four days ago. Ma'am, it was Wednesday. Nancy was here. She had you popping pills like they were chocolate kisses. Mm. Now, when I lie down and fall asleep, I can just wake up to these. What's a rose by? Oh, whatever. There. That's nice, huh? Yeah, it looks like something from Punk Housekeeping Weekly. Huh, I saw those punk rockers on TV. They're really a mess. Listen, Miriam, I have to talk to you. It's about Nancy. Oh, come on. She's taken on. Besides, she rather likes the men rich. No, no, no. I don't want her. And I don't want you around her either. She's trying to hurt you. Now, look, don't ask me why. Maybe it's some plan she has with your father. Maybe she's afraid of, uh, of your father coming back to you. I don't know. I think it's obvious that she's setting you up for something. I think you're crazy. Come on, now listen no, to me. No, you're crazy. I'm trying to help what, you. What, by try trying to turn me against my own best friend? Miriam, I'm your best friend. Oh, really? Well, Nancy's the one that's practically taken me by the hand through this whole ordeal, Norman. Well, who started this ordeal in the first place? And just where do you think her hand's leading you to, anyway? I bet you're just jealous. You just don't want me to be home alone at night with nothing to do and nobody to do it with, right? I mean, besides somebody who thinks so little of you. I'm sorry, Norman. It just won't work. Come on. Thanks for the flowers. 
Would you have listened to me if I would have brought you pills instead? You're drowning, Miriam. And every time you reach out to Nancy, she drops rocks in your hands. Amphetamines, barbiturates, whatever it takes to finish you off. How things going, Terry? Oh, hi, Alex. Fine. Ben should be by any time to pick up these lab reports. Good. Now, keeping busy? <laughs> busy enough here. Well, things have slowed up at home a bit now that the phone calls have stopped. Mm. Back to routine. Just about. A dull, predictable routine. Why do I get the feeling that you're trying to sell me something? Well, actually, I, uh... I, I was hoping you'd go to the hospital benefit with me two weeks from tonight. Oh, Alex, that's very nice of you. But I'm, I'm going to be busy. I'm flattered, though, really. Yeah, well, what's happening that you know about so far in advance? I sell popcorn, the high school snack bar during basketball games. You're brilliant at improvisation. <laughs> no, Alex, I'm serious. Ask Peter. Well, look, couldn't you get another parent to step in for you within two weeks? Are you trying to tell me that just anyone can make popcorn as well as I can? No, I'm trying to say that I... Um... I think you're reaching for an excuse because you think it's too soon to be seen with another man. No, Terry, it's not too soon. Look, don't you think I've, I've considered this thing from every angle? So what if we do set the hospital grapevine on fire? Look, I want you out of the house. I want to take your mind off the routine. Alex, that's very kind of you, really. But I just know that I won't be comfortable. Maybe in time. Terry, can I see those uh, lab reports? Sure. Where are you going, Alex? Um, to treat a bullet wound. What was that about? Somebody with a heart problem. Oh, was it fatal? No, just reoccurring. Oh, Dr. Martin, I thought I was going to have to have you paged. Oh, my investigator Slate. Uh, this is my mother-in-law, Terry Davidson. Hello. Yeah, it's a nice pleasure, man. Well, I'm surprised to see you. I thought the matter of the fire at Hollister Square was all closed. Well, it is, except for one very important detail. Hey! Welcome back. Well, thanks. Come on in. So, are you uh, getting all settled in here now? Mm, and it isn't easy. Do you ever try to sleep without dripping faucet, drafty windows, or creaky bed springs? <laughs> Rough life. Yeah. So, how's the uh, pre-publicity session? Oh, fine. I ate it up. Nothing like a little pre-planned attention. And uh, how long did that last? 45 minutes. It's kind of a long trip for such a short meeting. Yeah, I thought about that, too. But I figured, you know, I'm new at this. I, I probably don't understand how important a meeting like that can be, you know? Can I get your drink? Something? No, nothing. Something bothering you? Well, Cohen has been down here twice now recently, and uh, he hasn't even dropped by to say hello to me, or anyone else in the band, for that matter. Phil, he's a busy man. Come on, you were the one always reminding me of that. Hmm? <sighs> yeah, that's true. So, look, how is uh, Russ taking all of this? From what I can see, he's taking it a lot better than you are. All right, don't get pushy. I'm sorry, Phil, but with all the traveling and always being on during the interviews and Cohen always prompting, helping me out, it's pretty draining. And then along comes the slighted lead guitarist. Really, I'm, I'm sorry I said anything. Is it difficult being with Cohen? You can't give enough. I'm... But it's strange. It's like he's investing all the time, sure, but he doesn't really give you anything. You know, it's strange. Has he made a move? 
Phil, come on, I didn't expect that from you, huh? Oh, no, I, I know what you expect from me. You want someone to play off you on stage, someone to calm your nerves before you go on. You want me to help bail you out if you forget your lines or if you can't find your pitch. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't know I was being such an imposition. Becky, it's not that at all. It's not that you need my help, it's that you don't need it enough. Yeah, I'm jealous of Cohen. Oh, I mean, Russ is bad enough, but he's your husband. If Cohen gets somewhere with you, I don't think I could deal with You're not with making that. sense, Phil. No, I'm making perfect sense. Because if Cohen can have you, then you're not already taken. And if that's the case, I want you. You see, Becky, dealing with Russ has taught me how to be insanely jealous, resentful of competition, and... Uh, passionate to a fault. All very poor ways of saying that I love you. But uh, when Russ is all those things, you seem to notice. When I play that role, you don't. Don't say that. I'm just telling you the truth as I see it. I'm not looking for pity. Phil, Phil, you mean the world to me. Yeah, which world, Becky? Russ is your personal world. Cohen's beginning to take over your professional life. The only thing we share is being on stage. It's the only time I've got you all to myself. And then there's hundreds of people looking on in our own little spotlighted, amplified world. And that's not enough for me anymore. Ms. Redlin, I've got all the information you wanted. I'm not so sure I want to hear this. Oh, I wouldn't call what I found bad news. Now, I checked these findings with a friend of mine down at the county courthouse because well, I was a little surprised by what I found out initially, but he verified everything. Ms. Redlin, you are still Ms. Redlin. But my husband filed for divorce two years ago when I left. Well, and as you can see from these papers right here, the uh, divorce action was withdrawn and all action was suspended. I'm still married to Jean? And I can rectify that quite easily. Oh, no. No, not yet. Well, you're not interested in uh, dissolving this marriage? The marriage is already dissolved. Your paperwork can't change that. No, but uh, well, it would help resolve any number of legal problems that's facing you. Such as? Well, in some places, in some places, you're, uh, you'd still be considered responsible for your husband's debts. And then there's matters of uh, community property and uh, custody issues. Custody. What's that mean as far as Jimmy's concerned? Ms. Raylan? That means that you are entitled to your son. You mean if I divorce Jean, I can win custody of Jimmy completely? That's usually the case. The courts usually find in favor of the mother in matters of custody. Of course, uh, you did abandon your son, and, uh, and I'm not sure that the courts would look on your employment as a singer as, well, it's quite as dependable as, uh, as your husband's is. But then knowing Commissioner Slaymaker, I don't know how permanent your husband's job is either. And I'm assuming all of this will be kept completely confidential. Oh, I won't tell anybody. Ms. Radlin, what do we do now? I'll be in touch. Come on in. It's open. How's it going, Stretch? Okay, you go. All right. Gee, all you need is an apron. Yeah, it's called uh, helping out around the house. Lou, if you serve that to anyone, no one's going to be left around the house. Well, come on. It's just macaroni and cheese. You boil the water, and you put on this cheese stuff. Right. I take back what I said about you being dull, Peter. <laughs> all right. You're cute, you're smart, and you can mm -hmm, cook. Mm -hmm. Someday you're going to make someone a great wife. Mmm. Who'd you tell I was dull? Jenny, because she kept going on and on about how great you are. Well, it's nice to know somebody over there has good taste. Over there. Oh, I'm bad, huh? Put it this way, I came over here to break the monotony. How's your car, anyway? It's okay. A couple of ball joints need grease. Well, maybe I'll do that for you later. No, I wasn't asking you to do it. I kind of use that as a break for my study time. I won't help you with that. Now, tell me about it. I got my SATs coming up. How'd you do on them? They say what? Scholastic aptitude test. You know, you took it in high school? Yeah, I breezed through them. Yeah? What'd you get? Uh, 95. 
95 on both tests together? Or... 90, the 95th percentile. Yeah? Well, what'd you do on the verbal? Um, I can't remember. It was better than at least 95% of the people that took it. No kidding. That's at least 600. I, you did the same on the math? Uh, yeah, right. And the math, I got a 650. 1,250 on your SATs? Genius in overalls. You know the type. Hey, listen, uh, watch my noodles for me, okay? I got some sample questions upstairs, and you're gonna help me with them. Uh, Peter, I can't okay, help you cheat. Uh, it's against my beliefs. Hello, Frida? It's Jill. How's Denver? Mm, lousy. I feel like I'm gonna die. Do you still have that cot? Maybe. I uh, don't know when. Hey, look. We both flunked out about the same time. Do you remember something called an SST? <laughs> no, silly. It's not a plane. It's a test. <laughs> There's this clown here with this Dutch boy haircut who thinks that... And hello, Mrs. Davidson. Get out, no Oh, no, you don't. What are you here, collecting for the very short and unloved? Stay away from Miriam. Did she send you here to tell me that? No, I came here on my own. I know what you're doing. Actually, I'm providing her with relief from your visits. You're the one that's bothering her. Hey, I'm not force feeding her pills. I don't taunt her about Charles leaving. Listen, she needs those pills, and I try and reconciling her with Charles. Uh, look, that's not going to work with me, all right? Honey, I know what works with you, but I haven't got the stomach for that. Look, I, uh, I saw Miriam today. She's starting to lose track of time. Really? Yeah, and if that wasn't bad enough, she thinks you're actually saving her life by getting those pills for her. Well, that's a little bit of clear thinking on her part. And as for time, I know from experience that uh, seeing you can make the shortest day drag on forever. So why don't you just go play legal guardian someplace else, okay? Let me tell you something. You Miriam might need you for that dope. And it's obvious why Charles keeps you around, but I don't need you for anything. So don't expect me to be as patient as those people who are using you. Is this the part where I tremble? You know, Carpenter needed me one time, too, you know. He made me a lot of promises. Yes, I heard about that. And then you choked in the clutch, hey, right? I didn't choke. I was being <laughs> set up to take the blame for him. I went to jail with dear old Chucky refusing to accept my calls. I was facing felony charges. You know, I don't think I have to worry about you at all. Anyone who gets tied up with Carpenter ends up paying for it sooner or later. I just hope I can be around to watch. Sure you can watch. I'll even bring a footstool. What's this? What is this? Lunatic fringe day or something? Norman Elliot, I don't believe it. What's he here for? An apology, I hope. Could you ask your friend to leave, Miss Lawson? What's going on? Uh, Sergeant Brubaker and I have some legal issues to attend to, so, uh, please. Hey, no problem. I'll go get a footstool. Uh... Thanks a lot, Sergeant. Uh, the boy nearly attacked me. Miss Lawson, we're here with a court order. I'm sure your lawyer advised you. Now, hopefully, you'll make this as smooth as possible. You're to vacate this house immediately. How was your day, Mrs. Davidson? Uh, just fine. You here all alone? Uh, no, Peter's upstairs in his bedroom. Oh. You're mad because I was using the phone, aren't you? Oh, no, no, that's fine. It's just that you should ask first. Well, it was sort of spur of the moment. Uh, sort of like my coming here. I didn't want Peter to be all alone in this big house. <laughs> hey, Mom. You're home early. That's putting it mildly. <clears throat> Look, uh, Peter, you're cooked. <laughs> I mean, your uh, macaroni's finished. <laughs> what about these SATs? The questions. Uh, use a number two pencil. Uh, that's all I can tell you. Bye. She was visiting. Yeah, well, I didn't ask her over anything. She just uh, dropped in. Yes, Peter, I understand. But you know, we had an agreement. We were not to bring anyone into the house when it's empty. Oh, 
<laughs> what do you want me to do? Bolt the door? Don't let her in? Kick her out? What? Jill was on the phone when I got here. Is that why she was here? Well, I don't know. I kind of like to think maybe she came to see me. Man, you're overreacting. Peter, don't be defensive. I'm just looking out for your own good. Well, maybe, maybe you should finish dinner because I think I'm not hungry anymore. Oh, Peter, don't sulk. Don't sulk? Don't be alone in the house with a girl? You tell me how much a man I am during Dad's funeral, now you treat me like a ten-year-old kid. Sometimes I don't understand you. I'm not going anywhere. This is my house. Ma'am, in Section 4-10 of the Penal Code, as outlined in the order, you are trespassing. You know, you're a real sicko just tagging along to watch this. Sergeant Brubeck asked me to give a hand in case things got rough. What do you mean, rough? Ma'am, this is a very serious issue here. These are no longer accusations or legal threats. The order is the law, and we are here to execute the law. Now, please cooperate. Because you have to walk out, or we're going to have to forcibly remove you. <laughs> 